Um, first of all, let me remind you that I told you that the quadratic formula is kind of what we want to resort to if your expression is not factorable. Now, the first example we did yesterday, example number 21, we ended up with two whole numbers as our answers. And so what that meant was we could have factored it from the very beginning, okay? We just, the instruction said to solve it using the quadratic formula, so that's the method that we used. But we could have solved it by factoring. Now, the rest of these problems are not factorable, so you do have to use the quadratic formula. But my point was, you can use the quadratic formula on any quadratic equation. It will work. Um, factoring will not work on any quadratic equation because some of them are not factorable. That's all there is to it. So let's look at number 30. Uh, now typically I like to avoid having a negative A. So usually I would, if, if I were trying to factor, then I would move everything in this equation to the right side. But since there's only one term on the right side, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move that one. Okay, you could do it either way. You should come to the same conclusion if you moved everything to the right side. Okay, um, it'll just look a little different in the intermediate steps. So for this one, I'm going to add 6b to both sides. So negative 18 plus 6 is negative 12p squared plus 12p minus 8 is equal to 0. So my a is negative 12. My B is positive 12, and my C is negative 8. So let's plug that into the quadratic formula. Negative B, it was positive 12, so that means it becomes negative 12. Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. So all after we get all that written down, then we want to crunch all those numbers under the radical. Just focusing on that part right now. And we get negative 240. So at this moment, we can say we have two imaginary or complex solutions because we have a negative under the square root. We cannot take the square root of a negative number, um, so this is where the i is going to be introduced. But in addition to getting rid of that negative under the square root, we can simplify the square root of 240, and here's how that works. Um, this is one of those things that I think it's in the Math 2 curriculum now, but I don't think it was when you took math too, so we'll probably revisit this again later this semester, but here's just a little crash course on simplifying uh, square roots. So first of all, we want to take the i out, okay, get that negative out of the way. Now the question is, is 240 divisible by one of our perfect squares? So we look at our list of perfect squares here, and we really want to try and get the biggest one. So I know that 240 is divisible by 4, because 24 is divisible by 4. Um, okay, but we don't just want the number, we want, we're looking at the number squared. So we've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Those are our choices for what it's divisible by. Is it divisible by 16? Okay, so let's look at that. Tw uh, 240 divided by 16 is 15. Okay, so we're going to write 240 as 16 times 15. Okay, now the square root of 16 is 4. So that comes out of the square root in front of the i. 15 is not a perfect square, so it sticks. Okay, 240, we want to express it as the product of a perfect square and something that's not a perfect square, so we want the biggest one. 16 times 15, the square root of 16 is 4, so 4 comes out of the square root. 15 is not a perfect square, so it stays under. Now, 
we can simplify um, these coefficients. Or we can now ask ourselves, can I simplify those coefficients? And in this case, we can. Because 12, 4, and 24 are all divisible by 4. But if all three coefficients are not divisible by something, you can't reduce them. Um, and actually, in this case, we can also divide them by negative 4 because the 12 and the 24 are both negative, and that 4 has the plus or minus. So if we divide that by a negative, all it does is flip that over, but it's still plus or minus. So this final answer is negative 3 plus or minus i square root of 15, not negative 3. I'm sorry, we took out the negative. That's what I just got finished saying. Positive 3 plus or minus i square root of 15 over 6. Okay? And we cannot reduce the 3 over 6 because that i does not have a 3 in front of it. Okay? That is as far as we can take this answer. That is as far as we can take this answer. Okay? Do I need to show you another example of simplifying a square root? Okay. Um, do you need to see the whole thing or just mostly the square root part? The square root part. Okay. Let me try and make one up here. Um, let's say we have the square root of... Two hundred and forty-three. Okay, the square root of two hundred and forty-three. We want to see what perfect square evenly goes into two hundred and forty-three. Um, so one way to find the biggest one is to kind of start at the top of the list. Okay, I know it's not divisible by one hundred and forty-four, and I know it's not divisible by one hundred. So the next biggest one would be eighty-one. And 243 is equal to 81 times 3. So technically what's happening here, I didn't show this in the last step, is that you can break up a product under a radical. Now, not a sum. If there were a plus between those, we couldn't do anything with it. But because it's multiplication, we can say, well, that's the square root of 81 times the square root of 3. And we know that the square root of 81 is 9 and 3 is not a perfect square. So 243 is equivalent to 9 squared to 3. And you can check that by looking at their decimal values. The square root of 243 and 9 times the square root of 3, they give you the exact same decimal value. Okay. So they're equivalent. I'm not changing it. I'm just rewriting it in a reduced form. Okay. Those are the exact same value, just different, uh, expressed differently. Okay? So, um, I kind of have these jumbled up through 34. Some of them have eyes. Uh, some of them are actually, well, no, they're not really jumbled up. Um, sorry, we did through 23 as examples. 24 through 28 should not have any eyes involved. Um, and 29 through 34 are all imaginary or complex solutions. Um, one other thing that I need to mention, we didn't have an example like this yesterday, but I think y'all know this. Uh, if a piece of the equation is missing, so say we've got 3x squared plus 7 is equal to 0, there's no b, there's no linear term, no x, so that means b is 0. Right, that means b is 0. <clears throat> Same thing goes if there's not a constant on the end. If that were 3x squared plus 7x, then c is 0. Okay. Now, you really wouldn't want to do that one using the quadratic formula because what should we do? Factor out an x. That one's really easy to solve. Okay, So you're not really going to run into those. But you may run into the case where b is 0. Well, if there's no a, then it's not a quadratic equation. So we really don't have to worry about it at all. Yes? The i is 
um, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So the same way that we're simplifying these, like if that were the square root of negative 243, technically what you're looking at is the square root of negative 1, the square root of 81, and the square root of 3. The square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 81 is 9, and 3 is not a perfect square. Good question. I kind of just breezed over that. Yes? No, you, you still simplify the, you still attempt to simplify the radicals even if there's not an i. I was just trying to find, I was just trying to look really quickly and find one that did simplify. Um, and that was the first one that I saw when I looked at the paper. Um, but some of the ones on 24 through 28, uh, they might, 26, okay, yeah, 26 simplifies, um, 24 simplifies, okay, some of those others do simplify, yeah, it's not just if there's an I, you can simplify any square root. 